Hello guys and welcome back to Sonic Origins. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we fought against Dr. Eggman's plot against Little Planet. Um, and even though I got the bad ending, canonically, Sonic got the good ending, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, in this episode, we have started up Sonic 2, which is actually a game that I love a lot. Um, and it's going to be a bit of an easier game, as we'll see in a little bit. Um, so what we want to go ahead and do is collect 50 rings. Uh, at, of course, as always, 50 rings leads us to a special stage. Uh, but it's a bit different than in uh, Sonic 1 and Sonic CD. In Sonic 2, you get to the special stage by collecting 50 rings, going into a, into a checkpoint, and then jumping into this little... Uh, spinning circle of, you know, sparkly things. I don't know how to describe it other than that. This magic circle, I'll just say. We then get access to an iconic special stage, the Half Pipe, where your goal is to collect a certain amount of rings. The game will go ahead and tell you how many rings to collect. I was looking away from the screen for a second, so I didn't see how many, but we got it. Cool. So yeah, just collect a certain amount of rings, and then you'll get the Chaos Emerald. If you saw the very end of Sonic 1, um, there's actually a seventh Chaos Emerald that we're gonna go ahead and be that we're gonna go ahead and collect here in Sonic 2. That seventh Chaos Emerald actually unlocks something for us, which is really cool. It's something that I haven't really spoiled. Although, if you know anything about the Sonic franchise, you probably know about this. But I thought I'd keep it a secret, I guess, just in case. This, uh, the special stages here actually got a massive upgrade between the original versions and the updated versions. Um, I'll get more into that in, in a second. But we've just received our first Chaos Emerald. Sonic got a Chaos Emerald, along with the help of Tails, but... Well, Tails is also someone I want to get to in just a quick second. But, before we do that... There's something I want to show off that's specific to Sonic Origins. I don't know if this was also in the mobile ports, uh, I don't think so, but... In Sonic Origins, there's this little trick you can do to get all of the Chaos Emeralds early. Once you've finished a special stage and gotten a Chaos Emerald, pause the game and click the restart button. You go back, of course, to the beginning of the level, but the amount of Chaos Emeralds you have will autosave, and you'll be able to go back to that same checkpoint and try and try the special stage again for a new Chaos Emerald. This way you'll be able to get all of the Chaos Emeralds very quickly in the first level of the game. Now some of you might say, oh, that feels like it's cheating. I don't know, it's something they haven't patched out in the two years it's been since this game's release. Which, it feels crazy that it's already been two years since this game released. Uh, but it's something they haven't patched out yet. So, I'm gonna count it as something intentional. And even if it wasn't intentional, you already have enough checkpoints um, to, get, to get all of the Chaos Emeralds within the first zone. So it's not like the game doesn't want you to get all the Chaos Emeralds too early, because they already give you like a million checkpoints at the beginning. Anyways, while we're going through all of these different special stages, I might as well talk a bit about, uh... I might as well pass the time talking about a few things. First of all, Tails. He is our new sidekick, and he is a series mainstay. There are very few games uh, in the series after this that don't have Tails in them. The only one that I can think of right off the top of my head is Sonic Labyrinth. But yeah, even the 8-bit version of Sonic 2 Although he's not alongside you, he does get kidnapped in the main... And that's sort of the plot, is that Sonic's trying to rescue Tails from being kidnapped. Um, but yeah, his real name is Miles Prower, uh, which is a pun off of Miles Per Hour. Uh, that's how you know this game was made in America. Makes me wonder, <laughs> makes me wonder if, uh, if he was made in Japan, would he be called Kilometers Per Hour? I don't know. But yeah, Tails is awesome. He has some really fun gameplay in Sonic Adventure 1, and then some really crappy gameplay in Sonic Adventure 2. Tails' uh, character is very interesting. Something I want to get more into when I get to Sonic Frontiers is how, with that game, they started taking, like, character, like, 
They started taking characters and world building a bit more serious. Because after the adventure games, they kind of... Because in Sonic Adventure 1, the whole arc with Tails is that he's going to be his own... He's going to be his own man. He's not going to, you know, stay in Sonic Shadow forever. And then for the rest of the franchise, he was in Sonic Shadow forever. Um, especially in games like Sonic Forces and stuff like that. And so in Sonic Frontiers, they sort of focused on, you know, making that part of Tails' character, you know. He, you know, he's like, why did I do that? Why was why was I so weird in, you know, when the events of Sonic Forces were taking place? Um, and it's, very, it's a very sweet character building moment. Um, actually, for Sonic Frontiers, they got the uh, writer of the comics, uh, the IDW comics at least, Ian Flynn, uh, who is a longtime, you know, fan of the series and, you know, genuinely does seem to care for the characters. Um, so I'm very happy that they got him to write an official, like, mainline game. So I've got three out of the seven Chaos Emeralds so far, and it turns out that I actually have a lot less to talk about than I thought. So what I'm, gonna go, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is speed up through the rest of these levels. You get the gist of how they're all supposed to go. I'll speed up through these levels and um, and I'll get back to you once I've, you know, unlocked the seventh one. Alright, once you beat the seventh special stage, you get Chaos Emerald number seven, of course, also a, sh a seizure if you look at the background for too long. And... Wait for it. Just a second. Now Sonic can change into Super Sonic. One of the most iconic parts of this series is once you collect all seven Chaos Emeralds and get 50 rings, you can become Super Sonic. Basically, this game's basically this game series version of a Super Saiyan from Dragon Ball. I've never I've never actually like uh fully watched Dragon Ball, but even I can tell that this is like just straight up a reference to, you know, that original series. But yeah, that's why I wanted to go ahead and do the special stages real quick is just because they give you you know, the super useful thing, um, interesting thing is that in the original version of this game, I believe Super Sonic is activated once you get 50 rings and then just press the jump button. Ah, crap. Uh, but that was a bit inconvenient, I believe. Um, in Sonic 3, it's changed to where you transform into Super Sonic when you jump and then press A again. In this game, you press jump and, it, and then you press the top button on your controller. So, uh, for me, it's triangle. For uh, anyone using a Nintendo Switch, it's going to be X. For anyone using Xbox, it's going to be the Y button. I believe. I'm pretty sure. Anyways, talk about this level itself, Emerald Hill. First of all, music absolutely incredible. Let's just get that out of the way. Such a catchy song. Uh, it's immediately going to be replaced by the Supersonic theme, though. Uh, second of all, um, even though it's just, like, you know, your basic Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, like, grass-themed level, I still think it's so fun to just blast through. Anyways, here's the first boss fight, the Egg Drillster. Funny name aside, um, you know, you could just run into it with Super Sonic, but in normal form, you're supposed to just, like, jump on top of it, bounce out of the way, and then wait for him to, you know... Just keep jumping on them. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, show some footage on screen of me beating it normally in the boss rush mode because each of these games has a boss. Each of these games has a boss rush in uh, the Sonic Origins versions. Chemical Plant Zone, probably the most iconic stage to come from Sonic 2. I was reused in Sonic Mania, which was real fun. Um, again. The second zone of Sonic games are always usually not too fun. This one, I think, is quite fun. 
Um, but this, whenever I would play through this as a kid, I would always, you know, repeatedly die here and then just stop playing and never get past it. Sometimes, like, occasionally, very rarely when I was a kid, I would, you know, beat this level- crap. I would beat this level and get past it, um, but then I'd get to the third zone and then die there, and then I'd stop playing. <laughs> As you could probably tell, child me wasn't very good at video games. Heck, current me isn't very good at video games. So since we got Super Sonic with the Chaos Emeralds, uh, one thing that I would like to mention about the Chaos Emerald is they are, in the classic games, they are very inconsistent as to the numbers and uh, colors. Because uh, sometimes there are six of them, sometimes there are seven, sometimes there's eight, sometimes there's sixteen. In fact, I'll go ahead and list on screen all of the uh, canon Sonic game, all the canon classic Sonic games with Chaos Emeralds in them, and you'll just see uh, how like inconsistent they are in terms of number. Speaking of canic, speaking of canonical Sonic entries, um, there's like a page on the Sonic fan wiki that lists. Um, that says like, hey, according to interviews and stuff like that, these are, these types of media are canon in the Sonic series. Um, it didn't give us, it didn't give me a straight up list, so I made a list of my own. I made like a PowerPoint that shows all of the canon Sonic entries. It's not the prettiest PowerPoint in the world, it's just like the title and then an image of the box art. It doesn't even have any text. But I'll go ahead and leave a link to it in the description if you want to look at it. Let me know if there are any um, entries in there that are uh, that are that are not canon, or if there are any entries that I don't have listed in there that are canon. And go ahead and leave a link to your source on that, um, just because I want to be a hundred percent sure. One thing that this game has in abundance that Sonic 1 and Sonic CD didn't have is occasional, like, moments where it's kind of automated, but, um, but it allows you to go really fast. Also, this is a very funny image of, like, Super Sonic who moves super- at super fast speeds just, uh, like, waiting for this platform to move. But, like, the occasional moments where it's kind of automated but kind of not, like, it still requires you to do stuff, but feels automated and feels really fast, those moments are always really cool, and I think this game has the, the highest amount of those out of all of the games in the Origins collection. Ah, uh, crap. But yeah, there are so many, like, gaps in the floor that I would always fall through and die in. Like here! Here's the boss arena, and like, as you enter, there's a chance you'll like, fall into a pit- DANG IT! Ah. What happened there is that Tails attacked Dr. Robotnik, like, just as I was attacking him. Um, so like, Dr. Robotnik has, uh, invincibility frames, so I- I phased right through him and into the pit. There we go. Make sure you don't ac accidentally phase through him and fall through the ground and die right after you beat him, because that's definitely happened to me too in the past. But yeah, that's Chemical Plant done. I, I'll ha I do have to say, we're moving at a very like, high pace. Maybe it's just because Sonic 2 and 3 are faster than, you know... Maybe it's just because Sonic 2 is faster than, you know, Sonic 1 and CD. But, like, I spent the first 10 minutes of this video, like, getting the Chaos Emeralds, and we are still, like, moving at a great pace. We're already at, you know, the third zone, and we still have, like, half of the video left, so... Yeah. I do have to say, one of the levels at the very end of this game is absolutely obnoxious, so I have a feeling that I'm going to get stuck on that for a little bit. Um, 
But other than that, we are just... ...having a lot of fun here. I am somehow skip- I somehow skipped most of that level there. That was sweet. So one thing that I do like about uh, the theming of the levels in this game is that it goes back to what I was talking about with um, Sonic 1, how, you know, we started it, it, we started in the natural and we slowly moved into the artificial. This game has something similar to that. We started in, in uh, Emerald Hill Zone, and then we moved, which is very natural, and then we moved to uh, Chemical Plant, which is incredibly artificial. Now, we're in Hilltop Zone, which is much more natural. And then, as you'll see in a bit, the next level we're gonna go to is something that's artificial. And it sort of flops back and forth between, uh, you know, natural and artificial, until we get to the very end of the game, which is all completely artificial. It's very cool. It's something that I very like about, uh, very much like about Sonic games. All right, boss fight time. What you're supposed to do is uh, jump onto these arrows, jump up to the pillars, and then, you know, hit Dr. Eggman. But you, with Super Sonic, you could just use the power of momentum to go ahead and just throw yourself at him. <laughs> All of the animals that jump out of the capsules are really adorable. I actually once saw someone somewhere online. People always talk about the eras of Sonic games. Um, and I saw someone once say that you could cut up the series into eras based on the different animal companions. Um, so for example, we have the classic games, which, you know, contain, uh, you know, all of the different animals, like the Flickies and stuff like that. And then from Sonic Adventure to Sonic and the Black Knight is uh, more so based on the Chow. And then from 2010 to 2021 is, uh, you know, the Wisps, because those have been used in pretty much every uh, Sonic game uh, since uh, Sonic Colors. And then, more recently, with Sonic Frontiers, we have the uh, Coco, which I don't know if they were used in Sonic Dream Team, but I think they'll probably be uh, used somewhat in the next big 3D Sonic game. I don't know if they will, though. Don't quote me on that. Maybe because of, you know, people complaining about the Wisps, maybe they'll find a different set of cute little animals to, you know, center their game around, or maybe they won't have any... Uh, tiny animals at all. Whatever they do, I'm genuinely so excited for, you know, the future of Sonic games because, again, it just feels like they really, really do care recently. So I recently, so, so, so this year they're releasing a port of Sonic Generations called Sonic X Shadow Generations, which seems really, really cool from what I've seen for the, uh, for the Shadow levels, uh, Sega, or, uh, the official Sonic the Hedgehog YouTube channel recently released a video comparing the cl the classic Shadow levels with, um, also I could have transformed into Super Sonic there, I don't know why I didn't. Maybe it's just because that level was really fun. But yeah, they released a side-by-side -side comparison of the original Shadow levels with the updated ones. And my gosh, I am so excited for this game. I'm super pumped. Yeah, I know the previous, um, you know, the last port they did wasn't too great, but that doesn't make me any less excited for this upcoming one. I hope they learn from their mistakes from that one and can release something really, really cool this time around. Hopefully I don't eat my words on that, but whatever. Also, that was not intentional as a joke about 
Sonic Adventure 2. That was just... That was just me using words that are there and... I don't know, just accidentally making a reference. One character that's uh, gotten, you know, a bit more recognition recently is uh, Fang the Hunter. Originally called Fang the Sniper or Knack the Weasel, depending on your... Uh, depending on your location. That sounds weird, but that's not technically untrue. Depending on where you live, he's I he was either called Fang the Sniper or Knack the Weasel, and then, you know, he's recently renamed to Fang the Hunter. Uh, you know, he appeared, and he's just like this, from what I can tell, uh, just like this guy who just really wants money and will do, do whatever job it takes just to get a lot of money and stuff like that. Um, I'll need to do more, a bit more research on his character before I'd say anything definitive, but... I don't know, I think he's really cool. I don't remember too much of Triple Trouble from when I from when I played it, other than I really liked it. But you know, he seems like a real fun villain. I haven't played Superstars yet. Um, you know, obviously I want to play it before I give my opinion on it. Seems like it's got mixed reviews, which kind of sucks. Um, well, it doesn't suck. It's like... Anyways, that was uh, the boss Egg Claw. I forgot to name, give a name for the other uh, bosses too, but those were called Egg Poison and Egg Hammer. I just beat them so fast with Supersonic that I forget to even tell you what their name is. Anyways, that that level was, you know, it was like near a city. It was all artificial. Now we're going back to Hilltop Zone, which is much more, uh, you know, natural. You know, other than the robots that are around here, but those are all Eggman's doing. Whole point is that, you know, he's making all these natural places artificial. Gosh dang it, Tails! Um, one feature that was added, I think, in Sonic 3, um, that's now here because it's the Origins Collection, is flying with Tails. Uh, just hold up and then jump, and then spam jump, and then you'll usually start flying with him. It's great for when you want to get somewhere, but you don't feel like platforming. <laughs> Tails can be a bit of a nuisance sometimes, because, uh, and this is, like, especially evident in some of the special stages, but, you know, he collects rings, and then he'll get hit and lose all of those rings, and it's like, ah, come on, Tails. The special stages themselves actually received a massive upgrade in, uh, you know, in the mobile ports and, of course, in the Origins version, where, looking back at the f at footage for the original game, you just, you can see a lot less, you know, things are a lot less clear, and so I'm glad that, you know, they were made actually fun and playable in this version. I think the best special stages are the ones from uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, uh, but again, we'll get to that when we get to that. I, I get so excited when talking about these games that I'm like, that I constantly talk about games that we're going to get to, um, and I just need to wait, but I'm always super pumped. And so I just talk about things like several episodes early. Alright, we're gonna get through Hilltop Zone Act 2, and then we're gonna go ahead and end off the video, because we've been going on for a little bit long. I also like some of the, uh, enemy designs in this game, like the purple dinosaur thing that I jumped on just a little bit ago. That weird fireball thing, I, lo I love the design for that, it looks adorable. Now, there's one enemy in this game that I absolutely hate with all of my might, but there's a specific, uh, zone that I want to talk about that, uh, character on, or that enemy on, rather. So, again, as always, we'll get to that when we get to that. Yay, Supersonic! If I have one complaint about playing as Supersonic is that we don't get to listen to the, um, the awesome music in the background, is that, and now we have to, like, listen to the Supersonic theme, which isn't a bad song, but it's kind of, um, one of those things where if you listen to something for long enough, it'll eventually just become annoying. 
Uh, that boss fight was the Egg Scorcher Mark II. The Mark I was in uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 1. And I think I like that boss fight a bit more. It is easier, of course, with Super Sonic, but that's neither here nor there. All right, Mystic Cave Zone is next, and that's what we're gonna. That's where we're gonna go ahead and leave this off on. Thank you guys so much for watching, and in the next episode, we're gonna start to get into some of the more slow levels because because this is like we're getting towards the end of the game here, at least you know the end of Sonic Two, and so things start to slow down a lot more as they make it sort of more dramatic and more difficult as we get towards the end of the game. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.